with you with the price report number 34. I hope you're all having a great start of the day. And let's jump right into it. In this price report, I'm going to discuss the some of the events that are happening, going to happen in the month of September, along with what we are seeing in the on-chain and technical analysis and why we need to have patience during this period of recession. So let's get started with some of the major updates or events that are going to happen in the month of September, starting with September 6th. Around that time, the merge for Ethereum is happening where we are transitioning to proof of stake. And this has quite interesting consequences because one of the major uh, currencies is going into proof of stake. It's going to become more centralized, so to speak. But there are also other stages of it. So it's not what we you know, there are multiple stages of this merge. It's called Merge, Surge, Words, and Splurge, which is going to happen into the next many years. And this is the very first event that's going to happen. And what's going to have as a consequence is a minor reshuffle because there are a lot of miners in Ethereum network because Ethereum mining is very profitable as compared to other currencies. So the question is, they have a lot of GPU rigs and where must they go now? So that is the answer we will find out during the next month. There might be some volatility in the markets due to this. And one of the other uncertainties that I see us seeing in the next month, for instance, is the US is raising the interest rates as they say through the next months, I don't know if that is going to happen, but that's what they say to control inflation. But it's very hard to control inflation just by raising the interest rate numbers because that has adverse effects on spending and slowing down of the economy. And interestingly enough, Europe, along with the Russia's cutting of the gas pipeline just announced yesterday, it's also saying the worst drought in 500 years not seen from the Middle Ages as per the satellite images. And so the Europe economy is certainly slowing down, also deep pegging against the US dollar. You know, a lot of things are happening. Uh, however, US dollar continues to be seen as the, uh, like, you know, go-to currency, whereas Europe is dipping down. So investors are moving and seeing US dollar as a safe haven. And this comes along with this test Chinese economy for which people don't really have too much clue what's happening. So all these are headwinds. However, going forward, let's see what's happening on the side of Bitcoin. The on-chain analysis. Uh, so the Bitcoin hash rate is uh, topping again. So that's a good news. So that means the miners have demand for, bit for mining Bitcoin. And you would also see that this is something I've talked about before, the pool multiple, the mine, this which dictates the health of miners, because this brown line that you see, when it dips down below this, into this green territory, that means the dollar value of Bitcoin being, being mined on a daily basis is not profitable because they have to pay for the electricity. So they're dipping down again, but that is okay because the hash rate is going up. So there is some sort of balance. And if we go to the BTC USD chart, I want to just first come to the weekly chart. Um, well, so what we see here is, let me remove this for the time being. So what we see here is, this is the hash ribbon below, and this is the, of course, the candle formation for Bitcoin. Historically, whenever the miners capitulate, that is after the bear market, we, after we have entered into the bear market, the miners capitulate. And that is shown by the green dot or circle here. And this, over time, go into a recovery phase and then recovered phase. And then they are actually back into the blue zone, which largely indicates the bull market phase. So right now we would see that we were in capitulation somewhere about yeah, the May of this month after we had already entered the bear territory for the last six months. And we have been in this in this zone and then we are in the recovering phase right now as we speak. And also, 
let me go back to the four hourly chart we are in um, we are in a falling wedge pattern and we have seen this time and again in the past whenever we have fallen edge falling wedge pattern uh, it's we have an explosive move largely to the upside because that's what falling wedge uh, is a precursor to and along with the miners recovering that shows a good sign that we are somewhere near the bottom so people are calling for 10,000 and you know 8,000 and all these numbers these are just magic numbers we don't know where it's going to go I don't know where it's going to go but have, have we formed a Bitcoin bottom yet I do not know but I would say that we are below the 200 week moving average which historically is you know doesn't happen that often we are always, you would see, we are always about the 200 week moving average. So we are in the bear market certainly. And we are somewhere near the bottom. So I don't know if it's going to be 16,000 or 15,000. But I hope that's a quick recovery wherever we go. And if we go there, I expect us to bounce back, back to the 200 week moving average. And this is also seen from this total market cap that I've shown before. And the lowest of the lowest I could see is the 2017 all time highs, which was around $750 billion for the total crypto market cap, which means another drawdown of about 20%, 25%. But you would already see that about 19, 20,000 Bitcoin is already very, very strong in terms of, you know, a balance of buyers and sellers and sellers being exhausted uh, sooner than or later. In terms of XMR USD chart, uh, it's hard to gauge the data. However, I've been seeing the uh, flow of, uh, you know, buyers and sellers into this market and it's been quite stable about $150. Volumes are not coming back up as yet. So I'm just waiting for good volumes because that is what is going to result in some form of explosion uh, for the price going forward. And it's been doing uh, phenomenally well <laughs> as against Bitcoin in this bear market sticking around $150 which is good and I do see us you know uh, going forward in the next weeks you know going up in the numbers and where it's going to go it's, it's hard to say that but uh, this cup and handle formation is still valid in my opinion let us just see the volumes in for Monero. Yes, it's it was about hundred million dollars a few weeks ago, and now it's again sticking around those volumes. And also, interestingly, we would agree that the crypto market largely follows what is happening in the stock markets, and we do not know how the stock market is going to behave in the coming weeks and months. Maybe it capitulates, maybe not. And whatever happens with Bitcoin is followed on by all the other cryptocurrencies. One very interesting thing that I've been seeing happening with Monero is that it's being deep coupled away from Bitcoin in the last few months. And this perhaps is contributed by the anticipation of the hard fork with whatever is happening about the privacy concerns and more people flocking into the Monero ecosystem. So that is an interesting trend and I hope that continues going forward so that it tries to, where it's trying to find its own price floor and you know doing doing its own thing and last but not the least i just want to highlight upon the bitcoin's historical monthly returns the month of september unfortunately hasn't been so generous so about 80 percent of the times is given a negative return of about on average seven percent minus and the month of October thereby has been ex explosive. So for the month of September, I would remain optimistically cautious with whatever uh, you know is expected out of the month of September. As a summary, the Ethereum moving from proof of work to proof of stake, the miners moving out and the global headwinds that I talked about. So I would be remaining on the sidelines for the month of September. And that is all from my side for this price report. I hope you learned something new and I want to wish you all a great day ahead. See ya.